So, with these questions on the board, the A, B, C, D and E are basically what we were looking at last time with um, just finding basic probabilities, okay? So, uh, 0.6554 for A, 0.2743 for B, 0.7881 for C, 0.5139 for D, and exactly 29 days. Remember, exactly one figure for a normal distribution is zero because you're finding the error of a line. The second question is not something that we looked at last time, but is really a consideration of how the normal distribution works, what it looks like. So a second species of locust has a mean lifespan of 10 days and a standard deviation of 7 days. Explain why the lifespan of the second species is unlikely to be normally distributed. So can we think of a sufficient answer to, as to why? Yeah. Oliver. If, uh, if 99.7% of the data has fewer than three standard deviations, then if you take away three lots of seven from the mean, which is 10, you get a negative number. So we're saying that there's going to be some sort of considerable amount in the negatives, which doesn't really make sense because it's an H. So you can't that's good. So three standard deviations down will put you at minus 11. So you'd have a considerable portion of your normal distribution curve would have negative age, okay, which doesn't make sense. So, yeah, Oliver's right here, right? So this idea that, okay, that one can be modelled normally dist in a normal distribution and would make sense to be, but this one would not. OK, um, the standard deviation is too large. So it is these kind of considerations that remind that memory that um, reminding yourself, sorry, that the majority of the data, 99.7 percent, is within three standard deviations of the mean. OK, and that has uh, a knock on effect. So what we're going to be doing today um, is looking at reversing the problem. So this time I'm going to be asking you, well, if um, there is, say, 56% of the data below a certain value, what is that value? So rather than having to find the probability, I'm going to give you the probability and you're going to have to find the corresponding x value. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to consider this question here. So we're going to work with the standard normal just to start off with. So the probability of z being less than some number is 0 0.75. And I would advise you in these situations to draw a diagram. OK, because it's z, We've got the mean at 0, OK? Now, you've got to look at the 0 0.75 and go, right, 0 0.75 is 75% of the data. So what I'm saying is that 75% of the data must be below this value of A. That's what it's saying. So you must then identify that A must be to the right of the mean in order for this to be 75%. OK? So that is the first thing to consider and to make sure you're clear on. Now, the thing is, um, we now have a situation where we need to find that value. And we're going to use the tables to do it. So, does anyone not have access to uh, some tables? We all got some now. Are you all right over there? Yeah. Right. Okay. okay. So, the thing is, 
we're going to use the tables for this problem. The silver Casio isn't going to help because it doesn't, it can't do reverse normals. The class whiz, however, does. Okay? So, how are we going to deal with this? Now, for your tables, for your tables on page 22, the tables that we were using yesterday were on the left-hand side. We're now going to be using the ones on the right-hand side, okay? So, if we're trying to look up 0 0.75, then on my tables, I'm trying to look up probability 0 0.75, which is going to be right there, the 0 0.6745, okay? So that is the value of A, and we write it down as, remember yesterday we were looking at phi of z uh, is equal to as an alternative notation. Here we can write inverse phi of 0 0.75 is the 0 0.6745. So it's about 67%, uh, well, not 67%, because that's the probability. 0 0.6745 is the value of A in this case. Okay. So that is the situation that we have there. It's quite straightforward to find that. Now on the class whiz, okay, you're going to need to go to menu. Then number seven for distribution. And the third option says inverse normal. Now, we want to put the area in as always measured from this side going up. So 0 0.75 is the area, and you can keep the sigma as 1 and the mu as 0. Press equals, and it will give you 0 0.67448979. Okay? So you can get it directly from your class with calculator. Right, let's have a look at another one. So this time, this time we've got the probability of Z being greater than B is 0 0.38. So this time, well, let's, uh, I'll draw it over here. So draw a diagram. There's zero. So I'm now saying that the probability of being greater than B is 0 0.38. Now remember that this is 50%. So the probability of getting greater than B must be here as 0 0.38 in order for this to make any sense. Okay, so 38% if I'm going to be consistent with my other diagram. So that's 38% of the graph. Now, I can't look up 38% in my tables. Okay? Um, that is the problem. So, although I can't look up 38%, I can look up 62%. So it is corresponding to this side being 62%. And so I can look up that B will be the inverse normal of 0.62. That is perfectly equivalent. OK. So I can look that up in the tables instead. So 0.62 is over here at 0.3055.
Okay? So that's a possibility. Um, so in the class whiz, just look up 0.62 as your error. Okay? So remember, you always look at it from that side up. How about this one? Probability of z being less than c is 0.183. So to be less than a value, it's got to be 0.183. Or 18.3%. Now, if you're on the class whiz, you can look up 0.183. If you're using the tables, we can't look up 0.183. Right? So, you can look up 0.183. 817. Okay. You can look that up in the tables. So inverse of 0.817. Okay. Now 0.817 is 0.9040. But that's not C. Because C is to the left of 0. So does that mean C is minus 0.9040? Yes. So C must be the negative of 0.9040. And this is what makes it very important that you've got the diagram, because otherwise it can be very deceiving if you're just doing it just straight on paper without that. OK? So we can find our value and then take the negative. Okay. Right, could you find me A, B and C in these three cases? Hopefully, you are seeing that in order to make sure you don't um, get this wrong, a diagram is going to be your friend for this. It's very easy to muck this up. OK, and to get the wrong side. Right, so let's say we've got a normal distribution with a mean of 2 and a variance of 5 squared. And I want to find the probability, well, I've given the probability of, F, of x being less than a being 0 0.6. So what I want to do is draw a diagram to show... 2, and if it's going to be a value of A, so less than A has got to be 0 0.6, so 60%'s got to be less than A, then A should be a value there in order for that to be 60%. Okay? That's the idea. So that means that I know that A has got to be larger than 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look up 0 0.6 in the tables or on your calculator. So 0 0.60 is 0 0.2533. So that is the Z value. Okay. So what we then do is we put that into our formula. So remember our formula is Z equals X minus mu over sigma, this is the z value in the equation. 
The x value is the value of a that I want to find. The mean was the 2, and the standard deviation is 5. So it must go back through the transformation in order to find me the value of a. So 0.2533 times it by 5, then add 2. And that gets me 3.2665. I knew it had to be a value that was greater than 2. As long as the value that you get works with your diagram, right? then that's a check to make sure that it's gone right. OK? So find that A value, 0.6. We can look that up in the tables. That was the 0.2533. We arrange the equation and we get to the answer we required. OK? Yes, Annie? The line was A. So that point is A on the x-axis. Um, it was for the, nor for the standard normal. But now that my normal distribution has a mean of 2 and a standard deviation of 5, I found that value of A that it would be on the standard normal. And I now need to transform it to get it onto the normal distribution for the, the problem I'm looking for. OK? So here are three to find. Mean is 56. Variance is 10 squared. Find me the A, B, and C. OK. So what this should enable you to now do and access are uh, uh, questions A and B from a normal distribution question. OK? So usually what you'll be expecting is the normal distribution question will incorporate some basic probabilities to start, then a reverse probability, and then will move its way on from there. Okay? That's generally kind of how it looks. So using the techniques that we currently have, we want to be able to employ them into several different situations, scenarios. So we're on page 46, 815 to give ourselves some context problems.